Hey everyone, SDM with me Shubham from Blender File, and this is Node Concept. And today we are doing the gradient texture. So, yeah, it's the I guess smallest texture that is actually there in the textures tab. So yeah, let's uh, quickly finish this as well, and then we'll be left with like three or two more nodes. Oh yeah, boom. Anyway, so I have plane over here and new material. Let's shift A and add in a texture uh, gradient. So there it is. And let me just zoom in over here. So it's basically a very small looking node and gives two outputs. So and it's a color and a factor. So if you see, both are actually black and white. Uh, I know what the reason of having a color and a factor. It is because you know, sometimes you need to mix colors to get something, you know, do some stuff. And sometimes you need to use it as a factor. So that's why we have two outputs. And yeah, it basically has one gradient type, nothing else, and a vector input. So uh, the vector input over here is really, really important because, you know, you won't be getting the desired results most of the time just using the gradient texture. So for example, here we have, you know, texture going from left to the right, but I want the texture to go from bottom to the top. So, you know, one way you can think of it is you just rotate the plane. And, you know, that will work over here at the moment, but, you know, some, uh, when you are actually working with some complex mesh and you're making something, material, some complex procedural material, uh, that moment, you know, this won't be very effective, so that time need to use this the textures, or I mean the vectors over here. So I can show you a quick demo, but I won't be telling you what it does. So you know, uh, for example, if I just um, wait a sec. oh yeah, there it is. So this thing over here controls how much where the black portion will be. So that cannot be controlled with just the gradient texture. So that's why it is so very important to use a vector with the rain texture. So, and the next thing is these things. So, a linear gives you, you know, uh, well, what can you say? Gradient between black and white. So, ah, oh, linear. Hmm. Linear, 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 linear. So, yeah, linear is like, you know, a smooth gradient, a uh, smooth fade between black to the white where now white is dominant and you won't be seeing much of a color so there's kind of just black with slight black and gray in the middle and white so you know some shades are there but not that prominent so changing it to quadratic makes it more smoother now you can see there are more shades of white or I mean the gray so you know quadratic makes it even more smoother than linear then there is the easing so that's all. So, you know, it's just different type of you know the gradient fall off thing. So you can just play around with that. Then there is this diagonal. You, know, you need to use the texture coordinates to actually uh, understand them. So, oh, there it is. So you know, as the name says, it gives you a diagonal gradient. So instead of rotating it 45 degree, this will do your job. So. Now that's what it does, so that's a diagonal. You can play around with the mapping with this thing as well, you know, it gives you the diagonal thing, so that's why vectors are so very important. And the next thing is the diagonal, oh, uh, the spherical, so the sphere, it makes in a, you know, radial gradient from white to black. Then there is this quadratic sphere that is, you know, more, uh, smooth fall off so there's the spherical and the quadratic so quadratic is more smooth and gives more oh what do you call that fading effect with better fade so more variety of shades of gray over here <coughs> and finally is the radial so Ooh, that's big <laughs> Need to use that. so let's see radial is basically I guess used for um what do we say that Oops. Yep. 
So it's basically used for USB, so I never used Riddle actually, so I actually don't have that much knowledge over it, but yeah, we do research before, you know, making a tutorial, so yeah, we know what things do. And here you can see, hmm, it's not doing that thing. So, you know, what it is actually is a circular gradient so you know it's like a linear gradient and you bend it into a circle that's how it looks so if we have it over here boom and let's add in the material there's it so yeah from black to white it goes and turns around the radius of this circle we have so that's how radial works and yes yeah, not the radial that you expect that it is spherical and here where is that? It's a boom. I'll just do that. Hmm. Boom, there it is. So that's the radial you are actually looking for. Now, this is the radial gradient, you know, which is quadratic sphere or spherical, whatever, but not the radial. So radial is actually doing something really different, so actually gives you bend thing so it's not that useful basically just you know most of them are this excluding the radial so yeah that's basically the gradient texture and next we are going to do is the sky texture and I'll show you how to make some awesome skies over there so you can you know subscribe stay tuned and you can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash blenderfile and I hope you understood and learned something and we hope to see you in our next video till then happy blending and bye